Joe Sestak is the congressman from the 7th District of Pennsylvania. He is the most highly decorated uh, military, uh, former military member to ever serve in the United States Congress, three-star admiral. And uh, uh, his website, Joe Sestak, S-E-S-T-A-K dot com. I encourage you to get over there and check it out. And Congressman Sestak, thanks for joining us today. Well, thanks for having me today, Tom. Good to be back. Thank you very much. Um, I, I've been talking on the air here. I, I, I'm getting, as a talk show host, I, I get all the, the put-me-on-your-show solicitations, you know, from, from both the right and the left. I'm on everybody's email list. And I am being deluged by, uh, and I'm sure all the right-wing talk show hosts are, and they're probably taking them, by offers of guests who will tell me and who will go on the air and tell my listeners that this is proof that al-Qaeda has infiltrated our military, that there is a Muslim conspiracy, that we have to get the Muslims out of the military, that, that America is a Christian nation and we should ban Islam. That I mean, there, it's, it is so going over the top. It is so going into hate. And I guarantee you these people are showing up on Right Wing Talk Radio as we speak. Can you speak to what happened yesterday and to this this uh, explosion that I'm seeing and yesterday afternoon I heard as my wife and I were driving around just tuning stations listening to right wing talk radio um, ab- ab- about the spin on this uh, this terrible tragedy absolutely uh, first I do want to say uh, to the when this occurred yesterday all I thought about were the military families Tom one third of one percent of America's families are directly supporting those who have gone to Afghanistan and Iraq. And they are have family members that are in the most deployed, are most often deployed, are redeployed, stressful, and longest wars in our nation's history. So it's a tragedy to have to have a tragedy to place them first and foremost in our mind. And I hope we, I hope we do better much better at remembering the families. Yes. Number two, if I could, whoever is saying those types of statements, it's outrageous. I served alongside many men and women of the Muslim faith and was proud to do so. There is nothing further from the truth that this wonderful thread in our national security fabric the threat of those who are of the Islamic faith are anything but the best of our citizens as anyone else. Look, I I know that. I go to another synagogue, mosque, Sikh temple, or church other than my own Catholic mass every week and have since I've been a congressman. I will do so when I'm a senator because I believe that that who you believe in often represents... uh, uh, what you believe in often represents uh, who you are, and I find beauty in all the religions. Let me step back once and say one final thing. If anyone thinks that our military is not composed of the best and the most heroic of the diversity of our nation, they just haven't served in our military. At times, do things happen? Absolutely. We're human. But I, I'm outraged that anyone would begin to think what you just said. Yeah, Congressman, we're talking with Congressman oh, Joe Sestak. He represents the 7th District in Pennsylvania. He's running for the U.S. Senate in, in Pennsylvania, and we all wish him the very best. We need him in the Senate. JoeSestak.com, the website over there. But uh, setting aside politics here, Congressman, uh, I'm old enough to remember the Vietnam era. I didn't serve uh, in the military and didn't go to Vietnam, but uh, many of my friends did. Several of them died there. And uh, more than one of my friends who was in Vietnam told me about friendly fire incidents, uh, what was referred to as fragging, where soldiers would just snap and very often kill one of their commanders. Um, this sort of thing is not, um, I suspect, is, has probably been with us in all wars. People go nuts. Um, can you speak to that broadly without per- perhaps uh, making it specific to this? Um, or if you if you think that this may be an, an example of that, I'm, I'm just t- curious your thoughts on that as a professional military I, man. I can think, uh, let me speak broadly to it, because again, we do not know what moved yet this man to do what he did, which was so wrong, but that we don't know what moved him. But to place it into a broader context that you brought up, 
This war in Iraq and Afghanistan is different. The men and women who go there go outside the wire into a combat-like situation every day, 24-7, for 15 months, come home for 12, go back for 15. Many of those at Fort Hood, for example, are on the third, fourth, and even fifth combat yeah. tour. This is far America. worse than what happened in Vietnam, frankly. Absolutely. And don't get me wrong, Vietnam had its own trials. No generations that worse. But it's, let me compare it to, like, World War II. On yeah. average, your soldiers in World War II, in the most horrific of battles, will never see again. But they averaged about 182 days of combat and had dwell time in between for their nerves, their mental states to have rest. These men and women don't. And that's why we see 20% of our members coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan with post-traumatic stress disorder. And we kicked our vets to the curb after Vietnam wrongly. We're walking them back, but yet we're not doing enough in this area. We have appropriated $10 billion, but how well is that when we have them come back and we have them fill out a form, self-referral, to say, how do you feel in your mental state? If we had 20% coming back with kidney disease, we'd have kidney disease specialists in confidence quietly talk with them to see if they could help them with it. So there's more we can do. Mm. Yeah. I also, if I might add, so, over in Iraq in 2005, Tom, we had one behavioral mental health specialist for every 350 soldiers. We now have one for every approximately 750. Ouch. Uh, and so when it's even more needed because the returning, returning, you know, we have to put more emphasis. I went to the VA in Philadelphia four times in, Jan in December of last year, January and February, talked to the mental health specialists and others to try to figure out what else can we do legislatively to get the VA's resources now out into the community where the families live, to have uh, outsourcing of mental health, because many of these don't want to go into what is to them at times a forbidding VA. The VA is great, but into the center city of Philadelphia, but they could do it maybe more in a home environment or a national Guards and National Guard comes home with 32 percent PTSD. That's the kind of challenges that is the hidden cost of these wars. Yeah, yeah, it it, it very much is. And and Congressman Sestak, uh, we're talking with Congressman Joe Sestak, JoeSestak.com, his website, and uh, for his campaign, of course, Sestak.house.gov. Um, Congressman, we have just a minute left. Your thoughts on how we should be resolving these conflicts in Iraq, or in Iraq and Afghanistan? Iraq, the president has it correct. It was a tragic misadventure. We shouldn't have gone in there. I had a command of a carrier battle group that did retaliatory strikes, and we should have that date that's certain be out by the end of 2011. Now, in Afghanistan, I was on the ground in Afghanistan, head of the Navy's anti-terrorism unit for a short period of the beginning of the war. I will support a measured increase if the president decides to do it under the following conditions. One, it solely has to do with eradicating al-Qaeda that's in a safe haven in Pakistan so that we can be the scissor movement on the other side of the border to keep the tyrannical Taliban there as Pakistan moves to eradicate that safe haven from whence they can plan against America. And two, we have benchmarks measuring success or failure that will trigger an exit strategy if we not being successful. And that's what I would support. Yeah, well said. Congressman Joe Sestak, joesestak.com. Uh, Congressman, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. And thank you for your service to our country as a three-star admiral. Um, much appreciated.